Hi guys, it's Gib here, and welcome to episode 4 of me learning C++ game development by remaking Crash Bandicoot. So about two months have passed since I started this project. Uh, I basically started from a completely clean slate, not really knowing C++ or game development. In that time, I've managed to add the game world, I've managed to add the basic mechanics from the game, so some collectibles, some basic movement, uh, and some basic game mechanics. And in the last episode, I even managed to add some really cool enemies as well. And whilst there is hundreds and hundreds of things that I can add for the game, I think as a first project, it's drawing its close. Uh, and with that in mind, I would like to finish it off in this episode. So in terms of key components that I think is missing, I think there's two things in particular which I think can round off my first C++ project in Unreal Engine. So in this video, we'll focus on adding a basic game loop um, to the game, so a win condition and a lose condition. Uh, also adding some screens, so a main menu, a win screen and a lose screen. Uh, and then tying it all together with uh, some basic UI enhancements. At the end of the video, I'll also share some reflections of my C++ game journey so far and some tips and ideas that I, I wish I knew before starting. So stick around for that if you're interested in also making your first game in C++. With that being said, let's dive right in. So one big problem at the moment is that there's literally no purpose to the game. If you lose all your lives, nothing happens, and really there's no way of getting to the end of the level. You can just aimlessly run around with not much to do. I wanted to change that by adding a win condition and a lose condition. So firstly starting with the win condition, I know usually you have to pick up some sort of crystal or just get to the end of the level, but I wanted to change it up a bit and I really wanted to implement the gem feature. I don't know why, I just kind of thought that was pretty cool. So uh, that's what I did. This also gave me a good opportunity to test out my Maya skills, so I made the gem in Maya. This is the result, it looks a bit janky but it's alright. Uh, and I decided to add that to my game, such that if you broke all the crates, the crate would spawn the gem and you would be presented with the windscreen. For the lose condition, there was actually two things I wanted to do. Firstly, if you lost all your lives, it would be game over. Uh, and secondly, if you lost a life, you would just be respawned to the beginning of the level. So for the respawning part, it actually required a little bit of refactoring of the code. Basically how I implemented it initially was that if you died, you would just restart the level. But the problem with, with this is that it would reload the entire level and so a new instance of Crash would be created, including all the counters being reset to zero. Naturally I did not want that because I wanted the player to retain how many Wumpers they'd got and how many crates they'd broken for example. So I just changed it so that Crash was teleported backwards to a start location uh, and this seems to do the trick. The game over condition wasn't actually that tricky since I'd already had it implemented. I just was basically now checking to see if uh, Crash had zero lives and if he did then great we could just uh, trigger a game over condition, in this case a new screen. And this is what it was looked like when it was working. Um, there's actually a bit more purpose and direction to the game now which I guess is a, a good step in the right direction. The next thing I wanted to do to make the game feel a bit more complete was add a main menu, a game over screen and a win screen. However there was one small problem with this. I've literally no idea how to do those things. Basically the way I approach pretty much any challenge as a beginner is to fire up our good old friend Google uh, and look for some videos. I usually find that YouTube and also the Epic Games uh, community forums are really good places to find nearly all the answers that you need. So now with some basic understanding, I tried to mimic the basic layout of the screens from the game. After a little bit of time, more time than I'd probably care to admit, this is what I ended up with. For this, I really tried to focus on adding some things that I didn't know before. So I really wanted to add some basic animations to actually make it so that things moved onto the screen. 
And also the thing that I was really happy about was adding um, text changes when the user was hovering over the certain buttons. I then replicated the same thing for the game over screen and the windscreen. Now these honestly look pretty bad, but I'd honestly just run out of time here and I, I didn't want to spend too much more time on this project. So uh, I, I'll probably come and iterate this later and improve these. Uh, th these are the final result for this project. So now the last thing I need to do was make sure that I could add it to my game. And the way you do this is by adding a new level to the game uh, and creating a specific game mode for that level. And what we really want to do is bind our widget to that specific level such that when the level loads, the widget will be loaded. The final thing we needed to do was make sure that in our code we were able to load the levels for specific conditions and then we had everything we needed. The final thing I wanted to add to the project was a slightly better heads up display. And that's because this is what the last one looked like. And yeah, it just is really, really bad, even, even for a beginner. So for this, I just added some animation so that it would nice. gently come onto the screen when the player pressed enter. I got rid of those absolutely awful PNGs and replaced them with something that looks a little bit neater. And I also created extra widgets for when the player picked up or lost a life or a Wumpa Fruit as well. And just a heads up that for this, I actually use Canva's background remover tool. And this ended up being an absolute game changer in helping me clean up the assets for the UI. They've also got a lot of other cool features like the eraser, which I've used a lot to actually help improve my YouTube video making. So yeah, really recommend it to anybody new and looking for some new tools. And so folks, this is the end result for my first ever project in C++. Now I'm, I'm just going to talk over some gameplay here. I, I'm honestly really, really proud of this. And I just wanted to share some reflections of what it was like to do as a complete beginner. So about eight weeks ago when I started this project, I really knew very little. Uh, and as you can see in the earlier videos, I'm really just trying to learn and taking as much things as possible. So really don't try and focus on doing everything perfectly, but you just want to build something, see if it works and iterate on it every time. The reason why I really like to learn by kind of making a game that I love is because it's really motivating when you start to actually get tangible output and you start, you know, re remembering about all the amazing mechanics. And if you're showing something on the screen that kind of resembles that, it's, it's really motivating. Now, ultimately, in this process, there's going to be loads of low points, loads of roadblocks, you know, things that you just don't think you're going to be able to achieve or, or finish. But there's a really great community of people out there and resources online to help you find answers to solutions. A lot of those things I've also identified in the videos that I've been making over the last couple of months. And I think my biggest takeaway is just to have low expectations. So you see a lot of people who are going to, on YouTube, create amazing products and they're going to look amazing and they're going to look flawless. But as a beginner, you can also make relatively decent things. You know, this is not an absolute masterpiece, but it's a step in the right direction. And in the next project, I'll, I'll be starting from a better base and I'll make something that's even better. So this is just to encourage anyone that's new, please start. Um, you learn a lot by doing and making mistakes is completely natural. You will, you will improve and you will fix them and it'll be an amazing process for you as it has been for me. Thanks a lot folks for watching the video. I really appreciated you coming along with me in this first ever project. I'm going to be making a different game next so stay tuned for that. Um, if you like the content please feel free to like, subscribe and uh, write any comments below. And as always have a great day and I'll see you all later.